So the Anderson-Darling goodness of fit test is a commonly used test in engineering because it's not just for the normal distribution. The Anderson-Darling test is a goodness of fit test. And like most goodness of fit tests, it's a hypothesis test. For the Anderson-Darling test, the null hypothesis is that the data followed the specified distribution. The alternative hypothesis is that the data do not follow the specified distribution. So you'll notice it's specified distribution and specified distribution, not the normal distribution. We'll get into that later, but that's really because the Anderson-Darling test can be used for multiple distributions. Okay, but how does it work? Well, the Anderson-Darling goodness of fit test calculates a weighted comparison of the probability of each measurement's z-score to determine the discrepancy of the actual measurements and expected values from the distribution. So that is a lot of words there, and what it's really saying is that it's a weighted comparison of how likely each z-score is when you compare it to the expected z-scores. And by weighted, we just mean that different um, z-scores in different locations um, get a higher priority when it comes to calculating the Anderson-Darling test statistic. So for the Anderson-Darling test statistic, um, you'll find that it's usually the first normality test because it puts a higher weight on the tails, which means that if you have heavier tails, um, it's going to affect um, whether your you pass your and can assume normality or not. So it's going to be a little bit more selective than other tests. That's not what today's video is about. Today's video is really about the math behind it. But in order to understand the math, we have to understand what we're trying to do. So once we have these weighted values, we sum them and scale them using the number of samples to calculate our Anderson-Darling test statistic. Then, once we have the Anderson-Darling test statistic, we'll use a set of piecewise functions to calculate the p-value from that test statistic. And generally, we use the p-value and compare it against a critical value to determine whether or not um, we can assume that the data follow whatever distribution it is.